What's up, fam? Welcome back to the Boy Let's Go podcast. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Y'all, we got a good one for you today. I sound like Steve Harvey right now, but we do, y'all. This guy is not a stranger to anyone. We have Chris Tallman on the podcast. He has a new album out called Always. It is incredible. I've been listening to it every day. It is so good. And this guy, let me just let me just preface this because he's not gonna say all this, so I'm gonna say it. Listen to some of these facts. It's estimated that 20 to 30 million people across the world sing one of Chris's songs every week in church services in nearly every single language. Y'all, like, what? That is insane. Time Magazine actually called Chris the most often sung artist in the world as his music has inspired and uplifted an entire generation of believers. He has scored 17 number one singles on the radio, plays 29 top 10 hits more than um, any other on from any other Christian artist, which is so crazy. Sold more than 9 million albums with 5.6 billion career global streams, earned a Grammy, three Billboard Music Awards, 20 27 Dove Awards, and Chris is the first Christian artist to reach the billion streams threshold on Pandora that was presented with their Billionaire Award. Like, what in the world? This is so cool, and I'm just so honored to have him on the podcast today because this is a guy who has written songs that have literally soared across the world, but they're all about lifting up the name of Jesus. If you've heard Good, Good Father, How Great Is Our God, Our God, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone, Thank You, Lord, featuring Thomas Rhett, that's the guy you're listening to Chris Tallman. I'm just grateful for his impact that he's had in the world and thankful that he's on the Well Let's Go podcast. Okay, Chris, I'm so excited to have you on this podcast. Um, Honestly, I was just saying this before you got on, but I have been listening to Holy Forever from your new Mm. album every single day. Like, no joke, it's the first song that I listen to in the morning. And what's so funny is I had this playlist I made whenever I was pregnant with Honey. And I don't really add to that because I'm like, oh, that was just that sweet season. But that song, I was like, this is going in there because this <laughs> song is so good. And I just I want it to be in that that like zone of special songs for me that I just feel so close to God in. And so, man, God's already using this album so much. Um, it's just awesome. Well, this is a, this is more confirmation about that that song, Sadie. Because you know, I, I was thinking about this. When, I've, this is this record is that is, is that's out. Um, my newest record. This is my seventeenth album to make. Wow! And, and and then I made uh, when I I mean I was a part of fourteen albums with Passion. So that's thirty one. Wow. <laughs> Everyone records. I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that that, that much music. And Whoa. so when you make, you're writing songs, and so you know, you just never know. I, I never have known that this is going to be the the song that really connects. You know, I've never really had that sense. You write a song, you feel something about it. You're like, wow. And this one has been the song since we released it that I have had more text about. Wow. Maybe since maybe since Good Good Father, it's been wow. that many texts of friends going wow what is this and just all from all different spectrum of, of of the years of friendships over my life people have been texting me like this one is special and i've released several songs on this wow. record not to say they're not as what about them but no one's texted me about those. <laughs> but it's um but for whatever reason this one wow. has something there's something special about it and what i think it is maybe is one I mean, the guys I wrote this with, if you can't, when I tell you their names, if you can't write a good song with these guys, you need to go sell houses or something. You quit, <laughs> you quit, uh, <laughs> you quit music, uh, which is, I wrote this with Brian and Jen Johnson yes. and Phil Wickham and Jason Ingram. And wow. we were all, t- we were, we were to get, we were together, together, Jason and Brian, and they brought this idea that was, that Phil had had. And, and I love it because all of these people, part of this song, have this real heart of, there's this real genuine pure heart of worship and yeah. to capture that 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 song of worship that sound of worship and and what, what it is about this song i feel like is what i'm seeing right now especially or or maybe what's always been but it's it's become more clear to me when it comes to worship i feel like there's there's really two lanes mm-hmm. and it's there's there's songs of deliverance and there's songs of transcendence mm. and i've written a lot of i've written both and when you think about the songs that we sing today, mm-hmm. worship songs that we sing today, there's going to be one of two things. Songs of deliverance or songs of rescue. Songs of, I need you, God. Lord, help me. Mm-hmm. Lord, Amazing Grace is a song of deliverance, yeah. right? I would, it's amazing. Those are amazing songs, and we need those songs. The Psalms are full of those songs. 
But there's also those songs where you tap in every once in a while that are kind of these songs of transcendence that wow. are really nothing about us in the deal. It's just about the the glory of God yeah. and just the magnet and wor- how worthy God is. And it puts you in a place. It takes you to this transcendent place that's kind of beyond yeah. what you're seeing now. Beyond, It takes you to this, this realm. And there is an everlasting song wow. that is sung. And that is holy is the Lord. Holy, it says they never stop saying, holy, holy, mm. holy is the Lord God Almighty. And when you tap into that song, I remember when I wrote How Great Is Our God, I thought I thought it was a simple song. I never thought it would be sung like it is. But mm. it was a song that I really intentionally tried to like, I just want to put all the every bit of focus I can on the Lord as far as like not about what I need or about what yeah. he's done for me, but just about how great he is. Yeah. And I think the song Holy Forever touches that as well. It's just about the song of heaven the everlasting song that and is a song that hopefully reminds us that our faith is not 30 minutes old right yeah. it is it's generation after generation it's thousands of generations before us and, yeah. and those who come after us that says if the scripture is true and you, and i believe it's true and i know you believe it's true that there is a song of heaven that, that is that we will all join in that those who come before us are already in and that is holy 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 wow. and that's what uh, that's what I have to try to tap into in this song, you know, and so I feel cool. like in a way it has done that. Yes, that is so cool. And actually, I I saw this song for the first time on Jen's story, Jen Johnson, and it was the story that she posted of um, whenever Benny just passed away and Bill was worshiping to this song. And I think that's what's really cool is because in the, when I saw it, I was like, oh, I want to go listen to that because when people go through such a raw experience like losing a loved one like what they're listening to and what makes them feel close to God is obviously very powerful and very intimate with with the God and there is something about that video with Bill just worshiping it was like he Mm. was like in heaven in that moment like with them and so I was like oh I gotta go listen to the song and I was like wow this is so powerful so I've been listening to it every day and it, it does. It takes you to this realm of heaven. It's like, oh man, like I'm right there with the angels singing the song of heaven. It's so good. And just as you're talking, it's so crazy. I always, you know, show up in this chair to do a podcast interview and I'm so excited for everybody to listen to it. But I keep showing up in this chair lately and it's, I'm like, man, this is so crazy. I needed to hear these things um, because mm. this is just crazy. Um, but for the past four plus years, I've been like kind of writing songs and wanting to start a worship band. And so finally, o- over the past four years, I uh, got the right people around me and the right people were literally family members, close family friends. We started writing songs together. And so we are actually literally today, our first EP comes out. And it's like, which is crazy, like four years in the making tonight at 11, yes, at 11 p.m., our first EP comes out. And I didn't even like think about I'm stepping into this day that's been in the works for a long, long, long long time, years. And I get to talk to you who has like been a part of 30 plus albums. I'm like, God, you're crazy. This is so cool. (laughs) And you're talking about how to write this kind of song, how to write that kind of song. And I'm like, this is so helpful. Like, yes, Mm. yes. So, man, God is good. I I was also thinking way back to whenever I was little and I took my first voice lesson ever. And I (laughs) it was how great is our God. And I was just, I was totally botching it. I mean, my voice was nothing, but I just remember being like 10 years old with the voice coach, like making sure my mouth was open wide enough, singing how great is our God. Oh my gosh. That that is a back. Well, okay. So let's think back for you, throw back for you. When did you start writing songs? Has this always been a part of your life? When was it that God just kind of showed you that you have this gift? Friends, Ella has been on the move this year. I mean, God is just doing so many incredible things, and it's amazing to see. The Ella team is loving it, too. But there's not a lot of time to do some of the stuff we need to do, like go to the post office and stand in a line. So because we can't be at two places at once, this is why we love Stamps.com as our best option. When we say time with Stamps.com, we can put it into other things, like doing ministry and other things that are huge for us. And it's also why my dad, um, through Duck Commander, also loves using Stamps.com 
um, because it has just helped so many businesses save time and money. And don't we all want to do that? All the post offices and UPS shipping services that you need are actually just going to be right from your computer 24 seven. Plus you get discounts that you can't find anywhere else, like 30% off USPS rates and 86% off UPS. So what's not to love here? I mean, that's pretty great. Um, if you have an Etsy shop or sell through Amazon, Shopify or eBay, stamps.com works seamlessly and it would be a great option for you. All you need is a regular computer and a printer. You can even order shipping supplies through stamps.com like free priority mail envelopes and boxes. So again, what's not to love about all this? Don't mail and ship the hard way. Let's make it easy for ourselves. Sign up with stamps.com today. You can sign up with my promo code WO, that's W-H-O-A, for a special offer that includes a four-week trial plus free postage and a digital skill. No long-term commitments or contracts, just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code WO, that's W-H-O-A, to save time and money. What a guy. I love telling this story. Thanks for asking this question because this is, I, you're going to think I'm making this up. This is not, this is, a, <laughs> this is the truth. I was, I was in, I was in high school and, uh, um, this, I got invited to play at this. I, I was just playing at my small church. I grew up in a little small town in Texas, East Texas. And, um, I, it was a little small church and I, I got some youth pastor found out I played music and could sing. And, and so he said, would you play this youth conference, this youth mm-hmm. week, this, Youth conference. That's a big. It's, it's, it that. <laughs> it's like this. Uh, it was like a, this youth week at um, down at down at our church, and they were having this thing in the summer. It's like, yes, I'll do it. And I only knew three songs, and I, I really, and I only played at my own church. And so you know this. If if you only play at your own church, you don't know if you're any good because no one's <laughs> going to tell you the truth at your own church. And so right. I was like three. I knew three songs. I was like, yeah, I'm going. I'm going to do this. And I get a call from this. This about a month before the event happens, and it's this deep voice on the phone. It's like the name is James. It's like, oh, my name is James, and I was like, "Hey, James, how you doing?" He said, "Hey, man, I'm calling you because um, I'm speaking at this youth week, and I've never heard of you, and um, I want to know what, if we're going to be doing this for a week. I want to kind of know what kind of music <laughs> you, 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 who you are." And I was like, "Well, James, the reason you never heard of me is I've never done this before, <laughs> and you're calling me at my parents' house. I live with my parents. I'm in high school, and he's, I mean, you can feel the, the, the That's pause hilarious. on the phone." It's like, it's like, oh my gosh. And he's like, oh, well, what kind of songs do you play? And I was like, well, I know three songs, James. And uh, he's like, three songs? And I was like, yep. And, uh, <laughs> and he said, can I send you some music? It's like, yeah. He's, he's like, yeah, send me some music. And he sends me these tapes. And uh, this is crazy. He sends me these tapes, and it's like these worship tapes. A couple of them were from uh, Choice. The thing called thing called choice. It's produced by Louis Giglio, and I was like, and I was remember, I remember I'm in high school. I don't know who that is, and and uh, no I was just, well, what is this? And it was like these Bible study things, and I was, and I started learning these songs, and I would write them on note cards, and I would write the words down, and I came to this youth week with this stack of note cards, and of the songs of these choruses. It was it was simple choruses like Lord, you're more precious than silver. I love you. All these early choruses. I was, I was like, I'm, this is what I'm going to play. So I came with these note cards. I did of full of songs, and there was 500 kids at this youth week. I knew nothing. What I didn't know what I was doing. Sadie, I literally walked on stage. I was scared to death. I didn't never look at anybody. I never acknowledged anybody. I said hello to the crowd. I just looked at my microphone. I put my note cards down on the stage. Looked at my note cards and played and just played the songs for five nights. I just played these songs, kind of whatever was on the note card, wow. kind of sang the song. Looked scared to death. And this is what happened. And the reason I tell the story is at the end of the week, James said, Kennedy said, hey, man, I've um, been praying for you this week. And I'm like, I'm, I'm sure you have. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, and he said um, I want to tell you two things. One is um, you have no idea what you're doing. I was like, wow, okay, God bless you. That is very straightforward, <laughs> very direct. He goes, secondly, you have no idea how God's going to use your songs in the world. Wow. And I was like, and I was like, what? I don't have any songs, right? Because I'm just looking at note cards and playing other people's songs. And he said, No, I've been as I've been praying for you this week. I just sense an impression that God's gonna, you're gonna write songs, and the world's gonna sing those songs. And I remember he just put his hand on my head. Just there was no head bowed, eyes closed. He just put his hand on my head, staring at me, and he said, um, God, would you make Chris a psalm writer for his generation? Wow. And it, it was like lightning went through me. And 
it was a marking moment on my life and it started this trajectory of what is what is this and and and, and writing these songs and trying to I always had this, even even growing up, I would tell my mom, I'd play at church and I would be like, mm. I just like it when people sing with me. I don't really like it. I don't like performing, whatever that is. I like yeah. when people just sing. I didn't know what a worship leader was, didn't know what the term was, mm. didn't know what worship music was. I didn't grow up in that kind of church. Mm-hmm. I was just like simple. I just wanted to put, so I just started trying to write songs like that that were real simple that people could sing. And th- just a couple years after that, I'm rolling to this youth camp and a guy named Louis Giglio was speaking and it's like, Hey man, you're the guys on the, you're the guy on the tapes that uh, this guy sent me. And uh, wow. I learned all these songs and, and I remember Louis saying, what, what, what are these, what are these songs that you're singing at this camp? I was like, oh, I've just been writing them. He's like, mm-hmm. I've never, he goes, I, I travel and speak everywhere and I've never heard songs like this. And wow. what is this? And I was like, I'm just writing these songs. And, and then God connected us and put us together and we for and all the things that happened out of that. And wow. it's just been this thing of like, I look back and go, I could have never written this story, but I never dreamed it, but I never thought it, it wasn't mm-hmm. something I was looking and looking to do. It was just people believed in me. Wow. And there, and I think, I think that, and there was people that came along that God used to say, you've got a gift. I didn't see it myself. I didn't know it myself, but you have a gift to do this. And wow. I'm so grateful for those people in my journey. And, you know, everybody, and I'm sure you have those people and uh, people listening have those people who are like, man, that believe in, or you can, or, or maybe you can be one of those people that yeah. believe in somebody that That's says, good. hey, you, you see something in somebody that maybe they can't even see. So I never dreamed, never dreamed to be where this is. But it was that moment of, I haven't even written a song. And a guy tells me, you're going to write songs and the world's going to sing them. And wow. I was just like, what? And so that's part, that's how it started. That is so cool. And honestly, it's crazy that you're saying that about you wouldn't have written that for yourself. You wouldn't have believed that for yourself, but other people kind of believed it for you because my story is so similar and weirdly similar because it was actually Louie who called it out in me too. Um, He saw me. (laughs) It's really weird. I'm telling you everything you're saying. I'm like, this is so weird. Um, And I just played my music for the first time for Louie a couple weeks ago and we had this crazy moment, but Years ago, I was about wow. 19, and it was my first time I was really speaking somewhere, and I was really just, you know, filling, filling space at Winter Jam. There was 10 minutes while they moved the set behind me, and I was up there <laughs> to kind of, you know, fill the space. So I started talking about David and Goliath. And, I'll, okay, that's like such a classic message. So, I mean, it wasn't super profound, but I was talking about David and Goliath, and I was talking about being a champion versus being a legend, and this whole thing, and I did this thing. So I knew that the Giglios were going to be there to watch Crowder that night, um, but I didn't really know of them that much. I mean, our family grew up Church of Christ, so we didn't really know much about uh, the big church world out there. Um, and this was, we had just kind of seen Passion. We had been to Passion for the first time. We were like, wow, this is amazing. So I knew who they were from that, and I knew they were going to be there, but I didn't really expect to get to talk to them or anything. So anyways, I speak, I walk up stage, and there they are, Lou and Shelley. And Louis looks at me and he's like, God is going to use your voice to reach this generation. And I was just like, wow. wow. And he said, will you come speak at our church? And um, we want you to speak at the college night. And I said, um, I don't think you understand. I've never done that before. I've never, I was like, I've never spoken at a church before. This is about the extent of what I've done. This is 10 minutes. You're asking for like a 45 minute. Like, I don't even know what that means. Like, but yeah, I I will. You know, if you're asking like, yes, I will. I was so nervous. I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't even know how to I still, I mean, sometimes don't feel like I know how to prepare a message. I think I'm all over the place whenever I prepare a message, but I, I didn't have any reference for that. So anyways, I just fasted for two months, prayed, like two months up leading up into the thing, prayed, fasted, deleted social media, just got with the Lord and was like, God, like, you're just going to have to like lead this. You're going to have to guide this. You're going to tell me exactly what to say, how to say it. So I kind of prepared this message. And then as I was on my way to passion, I see this homeless man on the side of the road and I feel like the Lord and I, this is at this point in my life, like I said, my background was pretty traditional. I never felt like the Lord had spoke to me and I felt like the Lord literally said, get out of your car and go give that homeless man your Bible. And I was just like, I was running, like I was going to speak at Passion. This is my first speaking moment and I was going to be late if I did this, but I like could not shake it. So we kind of passed the man and then I told the driver, I was like, okay, we got 
we got to turn around. I got to go talk to this man. I don't really know why, but like, I just so strongly feel like I have to do this. Y'all, my girl Honey has energy like never before. She is 15 months old now and that girl is moving. She's walking all over the place and I absolutely love it. The other day we were actually at a basketball court just playing around and it just makes me so happy seeing my girl with the basketball. Maybe she'll take it out to her mama. I don't know, but it's looking promising. Uh, keeping up with Honey through maintaining my energy level though is the hard part and health is so huge for me. So maintaining both of those things just honestly helps me uh, continue to get to do what I love to do. You know, if I can keep my energy and health up. I can speak more. I can be a better teammate. I can be a better leader, a better friend, and most importantly, a better uh, wife and a better mom for my family. Um, however, I'm not a fan of taking vitamins, and I also don't drink caffeine, so it's hard to find, right? But this is exactly why I love AG1 by Athletic Greens. AG1 by Athletic Greens is a drink that not only tastes really good, but it also goes down really smoothly, and it contains 75 vitamins, whole food source ingredients, and minerals that you need daily. The vitamins and minerals inside of AG1 are so important so that you can keep well-functioning uh, nervous system and keep up a strong immune system. I mean, hey, to do all the fun things, you gotta stay healthy, right? And AG1 makes it so easy to do that. AG1 is great, too, because it's lifestyle-friendly, so it doesn't matter whether you eat keto, paleo, vegan, dairy-free, or gluten-free, um, this works for you. And not only is it super great with your lifestyle, but other things are awesome too. Like it's uh, less than one gram of sugar, no GMOs, no nasty chemicals or artificial anything, and it still tastes good, which is pretty surprising. Uh, Christian loved the taste too and shared AG1 with his fam, and now they're hooked on it and love it as well. So to make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you an immune-supporting free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase if you visit athleticgreens.com slash woe today. Again, that's simply visit athleticgreens.com slash woe to take control of your health and give AG1 a try. So I walk up to this homeless man, I have my Bible, my Bible that has all my notes in it for tonight, because at the time I I had written my notes in my Bible for I was going to say, and I was just like, oh man, I have no idea what oh. you're doing, Lord. So I just said, um, hey, um, I'm Sadie. I said, I would love to give you uh, my Bible. I'm sorry I don't have any money on me, but uh, man, this is everything. And he said, no, I can't take that. And I said, well, sure you can. Please just take it. I would love for you to have it. And man, it's a gift and it changed your life. And he said, no, I, I can't take that. I don't want that. And he said, um, you know, he said, I'm an atheist. I said, well, that's okay. I mean, you can still take it. I mean, I'd just love for you to have it. He said, no, I really can't take that. So then I was like, God, like, what in the world? Why did I come over here? So then I'm like, okay, I'm just going to put this Bible on the ground. I was like, look, I'm just going to leave this here. I'm going to walk away. You can read this if you want. You don't have to. And then he was like, no, I can't take that, but give it to someone who will. And he said, someone else needs that. It's just not me. And there's something in this moment where I just realized, like, man, like, you know, this is kind of what I'm going to do. Like, I'm going to go and I'm going to offer the word to people and I'm going to preach the word and some are going to take it and some are not, you know? And it really is up to that person if they're going to receive. I can only be obedient to what the Lord's asked me to do. So I kind of had this moment. I was like very emotional. Go speak at Passion. Well, I get done with kind of my notes that I had prepared. I still had like 10 minutes left. So I was like, I'm just going to tell the story that just happened to me. So I share this moment about this homeless man and this moment I said, and some of you are going to take it and some of you aren't. And, um, to this day, I've been speaking now for the past six years since that moment. To this day, that is the most viral message I have ever done. It literally went so viral in all different languages, and that moment with the homeless man story took off over the, all over the world. And that's what people wow. begin to know me as a people didn't know me as a speaker before that. I wasn't preaching before that. And after that, everyone thought I was a preacher and speaker. And that's what I've been doing for six years. And so I understand like your story. It's so crazy. It's like, I would have wow. never, I would have never like even dreamed of this being my life. I would have never even known how to walk into that. But people around me believed in it. And Louis was like, hey, I'm going to give you a shot, even though you've never done this before. Um, and so I want to talk about that because we have such similar stories. Yeah. And I think so many young people right now, they have this gift. Um, maybe they know they have it. Maybe they don't. Um, I'm specifically speaking to the ones who know they have the gift. They're like, I'm really good at songwriting. I'm really good at leading worship. And they're trying to push it to, to get to this success or to this uh, the stage or the number, whatever they're trying to do. How do you, you know, rest in having the gift that God's given you, but waiting for the Lord to elevate you if that's going to be part of your story? 
That is, that's the, that's, that's the key. I mean, for me, to, I think that, you know, the, the flesh, the human part of me is always like, man, I, I, I'm, I'm ready. I can do this. I, I know I've, I've got, so, I've got songs, you know, when songs started coming, give me opportunities, give me opportunities. And it, it just was never, um, it was never really fast for me. It was never like this, like this, like, oh man, overnight. I mean, people, I just look at, I, I look at people who like have had so much success at like yeah. so young, you look at like pop stars or whatever you think, man, how does that, how does that, you look at that and you're, you, you, it's so easy to compare your life to That's other right. people. Comparison kills everything yeah. and it just destroys any creativity. It destroys everything in your life, really. Mm -hmm. But it can, you compare yourself to some other uh, other person's speed or pace. And for me, I can just say it, it was always just small steps, small things all through the years of like just whatever opportunity I would, that God would give me, I would do it. And it would be so like, I mean, we're talking, I would show up places and seven people would be there. 10 mm, people would yeah. be there. People like, I forgot that I was coming. I remember going to, I mean, I was going to things and they forgot they invited me and I was sent at the airport and no one came to pick me up. I've got all kinds of those things. And so like, you know, it's like, it's not like it was just like, oh man, I wrote some songs and then I wrote How Great Is Our God and then bam. And that was like, that was, you know, years into it. Yeah. And it was like so much, so, but God was always, you know, I look back and he's always get preparing me for the next step, for the yeah. next thing, for the next opportunity, for the next responsibility. And those responsibilities got so much bigger and bigger and bigger. And I don't, I mean, I would, have, I would be done and burned and gone if it would have been like that overnight, you know? Yeah. And, but just to be able to, these years and years of just that, you know, trying to stay in a place of like, of, of really, dependent upon the Lord and, and not losing that thing. I think if it, I think a beautiful, beautiful thing for me and all of that is like, wow, this, this is, a, this takes a lot and I have to be dependent on God to provide all these kind of different, these, yeah. these, these uh, different opportunities because, you know, it's not just overnight and not just like, wow, okay, that was easy. Yeah. It was like, okay, Lord, what, what, what's happening? I remember stepping out of college, going through, doing it all the way through college and thinking, how do, how do I like do this and survive like mm. financially? How do I make I, like is this a career? No way, my family's in ministry. I don't know anything about what that is. Like, and how do you do music? I don't. I didn't have like a. I wasn't a, a like a signed artist. Didn't have a record yeah. label. There was not. There was none of that. And yeah. It was like, and I was I was in college. I was like, how do, how do I do this? Yeah. And I and I remember uh, thinking, well, I'll just go to. Um, I was going to start out from pre-med medicine and thinking, wow. um, maybe I'll go to medical school, medical school. And then I was like, well, no, I like, I like to work in sports medicine somehow. <laughs> and I thought I got to get into graduate school and do all these things. And I'll, and then I had all these opportunities to play music. And it was like this real crossroads in my life where I was like, okay, if I go and just down this path of sports medicine or whatever, I'm that music. I can't do that. I can't do both. And then, so the opportunity just, I was like, okay, Lord, that's cool. I'm going to do this. It was one of those steps of faith. Like, I'm not going to graduate <laughs> school. I'm not going to pursue that anymore. I, I feel like you're opening up doors for me. I yeah. don't know how to do this. You and I didn't have a band. I didn't have a. I didn't have CDs. I didn't have websites. Nothing. Yeah. I was just opportunities to play, and people were calling me, and these opportunities. And God was definitely making a way, making it obvious that He was opening up doors for me. Yeah. Um, but it was just those small steps, and they just kept that's leading good. to more and more and more things. And so. You can't, uh, what do they say? You can't despise the small things, that's the small right. beginnings. Yep. Don't despise the small beginnings because it's what it, that's what it takes. And I look back and I'm so grateful for that. I'm so grateful for the road and the path. And it's good. It's God's timing. I've always said this. If God has something for you to say, he will move mountains to put you there. Yeah. And he, that's his, that's his place. He does that. The, yep. and, he, and the Holy Spirit knows exactly what, what you need and to be in that place of relying on, him for the next steps even even in this even this far down the road for me it's like okay lord um you know what where, where are we leading how do i lead my team how do how do i lead me you know now there's people that that it was all it was always just me and god <laughs> yeah. you know like okay what are we doing lord and now it's all these people that yeah. um god has surrounded me with okay how do i lead this team and how do i and what all that you've given me and all these these the, my band and my crew and the people that 
the, all the all these things. That, how do I? What's the what's these steps? Well, give me direction. So you, I'm I always. I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm always in that place. Just good. like Lord, what, what are the next steps? You know, That's and so good. So for me, if it encourages anybody, it's been a long road and yeah. um, many many years. It's been 25 years of traveling and playing and, and writing songs and. Yeah. It's so good. It's so good because I think so many people, especially in college, they think like, okay, at the end of this, something's just going to work out perfectly. I'm going to get this huge opportunity or I'm going to move here. It's just going to be like so clear. And most people find, you know, it's not. You know, they get to their senior year and the next step's supposed to come and everybody's in the same boat of, I don't know what in the world I'm about to do. And it's in those moments that it requires faith. It requires trust. It requires you to say like, okay, I don't know what's next. It might be smaller than I thought, but this is where the Lord's leading. So I'm just going to say yes and just walk in an obedience to that. This summer was full of traveling. We did so much traveling and got to spend so much time as a family. I got to speak in some incredible places, and it was just a blessing. But if I'm going to be honest, when I'm away, I mean, I do miss my bed. Don't we all kind of miss our bed sometimes? Last year, Christian and I got matched with the most comfortable mattress by Helix Sleep, thanks to our Helix Sleep quiz that we are so grateful for because it was so quick and easy. This Helix Sleep quiz takes about two minutes, and it matches your body type and sleep preferences to a mattress perfect for you. And if you're married like me, this quiz is great because it'll take both of your preferences into consideration and match you to a great one for you and your spouse. So it gets the perfect combo. For me personally, I am a side sleeper and Christian is too. And so I was wanting something that was not too firm and not too soft, which led me to getting matched with the Helix Midnight mattress. So maybe you have a sleep preference just like mine or you're completely different. Helix sleeps knows that everybody's different and wants you to find the mattress model that is just for you. They even have mattresses with specialized cooling technology that is a game changer because there are some nights where Christian, Honey, Cabo, and myself are all pouting together and Helix Sleep Mattress can keep it a little bit cooler, which we do appreciate. Mattress shopping can be overwhelming, I get it, but Helix Sleep makes it super easy. All you have to do is take their online quiz, order the mattress you get matched to, and the mattress actually will come straight to your door, shipped for free. I mean, hello. So uh, say see you later to all the awkward mattress store moments and hello to Helix Sleep. Uh, you don't have to just take my word for it. Helix was awarded number one best overall mattress by uh, several different magazines. So just go to helixsleep.com slash Sadie. Take their two minute sleep quiz today and they're gonna match you to a customized mattress that will give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10 year uh, warranty and you can try it for 100 nights risk free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it. So hey, what's not to lose you're gonna love it though helix is offering up to 200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners at helixsleep.com slash sadie that's a steal guys you don't want to miss it that's helixsleep.com slash sadie for up to 200 off and two free pillows and i love how you said uh that God will move mountains if he needs, you know, if, if you say something and it needs to get out, God will move mountain. And I actually, it was like, I thought about that when I was in Israel. When we were in Israel and we went to where um, Jesus preached, like the Mount of Beatitudes, whenever he was actually like, you know, saying this message that was totally counterculture. He's like, blessed are the poor in spirit, blessed are, like just saying stuff that nobody had like said before. And he's preaching it. And they were saying that that day there were thousands of people there. There's a ton of people there, hundreds of people there who gathered around to listen to Jesus preach. Well, the way that literally the mountain is shaped there, they were talking about how if you're at the bottom of this hill, even if you're talking at the bottom of it, the person at the top of the hill can hear you because it's like this dome effect that it kind of mm-hmm. echoes up. And I was like, you know what? That is so cool that even where Jesus came to preach this message, that everyone there could have heard him that day literally because of the way that the mountain was shaped. Like literally because of the way the hill was shaped. I was like, that was before they had like sound guys. They're like, Jesus, let's let's do a little mic check real fast. It's like, <laughs> no, they like had none of that. So how do people, you. yeah, like, can you hear me in your ears? Jesus yeah okay good they're like no like they're just sitting on the side of a hill and like Jesus starts teaching and the people can hear him because of the way the land was formed I was like you know that really is how God does things it's like if God's leading you to do something like he'll shape the space around it you know like you say yes yes, you do what you can do he'll do what he can do and that's what I always say to God I'm like if you don't do it this is nothing you know (laughs) but if if you show up this is gonna be crazy 
And your journey is going to look so different than uh, somebody else's. It's going to be unique because God has a unique. He has a. He's wired you differently. He's wired you, and that's what. And that's where, like, you touched on the. We touched on the comparison thing. You look at somebody else's journey and think, "Well, that's what I. I need to do that. I need to do that." No, you don't. Yeah. It's uh, you. That you, you have a you. You have a unique thing, and at where you are, and, and trust that where you are is exactly in God's plan. In God's plan. In God's place. And that's good. What's what's the uh, uh, my favorite? Gosh, I just this my favorite pro, proverb sixteen nine is I love how the New Living Translation says that we can we can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. Oh, that's good. In the in the heart of the in the heart of man, people make their plans, but the Lord determines their steps. Yep. Proverb sixteen nine. I've that's always been a, a verse for me that I always come back to. It's like I, I can make plans all I want. This and it's good to make plans. It's good to like to dream and vision, but it's, it's the Lord that determines the steps. You exactly what you were saying, your story and my story. I, I see it. I was like, wow, I would have never, these steps would, I would have never taken these steps, but God, these are the steps you have for me. And, um, that's always a good to, place to trust. Right. It's that? good. It's so good. I love it, man. This is so rich. So there's a question I ask everyone who comes on the Well, let's go podcast. And the question is, okay. What is the best piece of advice you've ever been given? You've obviously given us so many that we could take with us. Um, but what is the best piece of advice that you have been given? Because that that seems to be uh, the thing that we're all after. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's good. Um, I've been given a lot of uh, incredible advice. I go down through it. Gosh, it just flooded me right now of different people in my life that have said things that are incredibly important at times. Um, I would say, um, I would tell maybe, maybe with a story, uh, and it's kind of fun, um, is, uh, years ago, several years ago, um, I was out on the tour and my wife sent me a text, Lauren, and she said, uh, Hey, I want you to listen to this song. And she had never sent me a song before, never sent me a text before. <laughs> I mean, I sent me a text, but never sent me a text of a song before. So yeah. she listen to the song. She just doesn't do that. And I was out on the road, and Sadie had completely forgot to listen to the song. I neglected it. I completely forgot. I get back home, and she's like, did you listen to that song I sent you? And I was like, ah. Uh. I was like, okay, this could go a couple ways here. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, was like, I was like, you know, babe, I'm out on the road. I'm sitting on the bus eight hours a day doing nothing. Um, I, uh, I didn't get to it. And, um, and so she's like, let's, let's listen to the song right now. She puts, it, she puts this, so she goes, I just feel like this song you would connect with. She plays me this song, and this little chorus starts. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. And it's, there is a demo of the song. Um, and I was like, oh, my gosh. I just remember hearing it going, what is, uh, what is this? Wow. I remember instantly texting, I mean, instantly Googling who, who trying to write, the, who wrote this song. And I found out it was my, my buddy, Pat Barrett. Hmm. Anyway, ended up calling Pat. And and we connected on the song. And I was like, I want to record this song. I want to. I will sing this song every night until I die. I mean, this song is going to be. Wow. I just know people need to hear this song. So I say all that to say, what's the best advice? Because when I was is listen to your wife. Because <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> that's so good. <laughs> because I was thinking, man, of all the things, uh, my, my life has been saved so many times through Lauren, through that's my wife. Awesome. God gave me an incredible mate. And her wisdom to me and her her gift to me of being steady for me. And so when when I when uh, when I was getting married, some friends of mine said, Hey, you need to listen to her. You need to listen to her. She's got things to say. And it's amazing that probably the biggest song, greatest song that I have ever recorded of my career came from my wife saying, Wow, listen to this. And and me not paying attention and her having to say, no, I'm telling you, listen to this. This song is for you. And it's a funny, it's a little funny way of saying that, but it's in, it's in, it's true that God puts people in our lives um, to uh, for you know He connects us. And for a long time, I was single for a long time, and God gave me Lauren and knew exactly what I needed. And That's awesome. And I'm so grateful for that and the advice she's and the things she's given me, but to listen to her. And um, I, I think that's 
probably the most important thing that that's ever happened to me is her and just the things that she said along the way and listening to her and the way it's shaped my life and changed my life yeah. in a great way um, is, has been very powerful. And, um, and then my buddy, Pep Jackson, who just passed away a few years ago, he's a legend. Um, he was a legend in our faith. And he's, I remember he said, the best thing you can give people is your friends. And I was always like, that's the advice he would say, give, give people, the best thing you can give people is your friends. And I was always like, wow, that's so special. Cause I think about the relationships that the connecting relationships I've had and, and, and inter, in introducing people with my, with friendships and, fr- and how, what, how friendship at the end of the day, and you know this, and people know this at the end of the day, it is all about relationship. All this other stuff is all about the people yep. around us at the end of the day, who you got, who you got, you know, yeah. when, it, when it's all said and done, it's going to be those people and you're right there, those, 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 your family, your, your, your mate, your children, your friends, at the end of the day, that's what it's about. And yeah. um, I'm always trying to remember that, that nothing is more important than the, the, those close around me, the relationships around me. Yep. Gosh, that's so good. Our whole thing at LO, Live Original, that's behind me, our whole thing is to be a good sister and a friend to those who don't have one. And um, so we are all about sisterhood, friendship, community, because you're so right. At the end of the day, that is what matters. It's your people. It's people you do life with. And man, last night we um, had a long day at uh, work. We are getting ready for a conference next week. So we've been staying up super late, but it was one of our friend's birthdays. So we're like, all right, we got to go celebrate him. It was so funny because all of our friends were all like kind of young, married. Uh, I have my daughter with us and we were, it was supposed to be a surprise party, but we didn't think about the fact that we all parked in the front and we were all hiding as if he didn't know we were all there, but we parked in the front and it was so funny watching. We're like, surprise. He's like, I saw y'all's cars, but it was so funny. And it was just, it was just so great. But it's like those people, we, the, the group that was there last night, we meet every Wednesday night and we just, we just talk about the real stuff. And it's like, you know, those things, you just, uh, those are the things that matter. Those are your people. Those are the, those are the things that make life good. You know, it's just the people around you. And yeah, life is hard. Sometimes there are hard moments in that, but that's just like the sweetness um, that God yeah. allowed us to have with, with friendship and people around us. I love your advice of listen to your wife. That's a, well, that's a good moment. Um, so a, a lot of people that listen to this podcast are in their 20s, you know, college students or younger 20s, young moms. And so these are the people that love The Bachelor, okay? The Bachelorette. This is like, the, this is these types of people. And I have, okay. I have heard that the way that you proposed to Lauren was pretty epic. So I think we should end on this story uh, because I was like, when I heard this, I was like, dang, that is good. And Lauren deserves all of it. So you got to tell the story. Well, when I proposed to Lauren, so I had this idea uh, that um, I'd heard about this place down in, in Antigua, Guatemala, and um, this beautiful old, um, it's kind of a, it was an old monastery that's turned into a hotel at the side of a cliff, this beautiful place. And I'd never been there, but I'd seen pictures of it, and I'd, and I'd, and I'd seen like what they had done, like somebody had talked about, um, they'd seen a proposal there and how beautiful they made this place. And so they had an old, like, uh, th- I don't know, it was maybe an old wine cellar and it was turned into this, this room that had a dining room. And I knew that this would be really special. And, and so, um, I thought this would be a great place. How do I, how do I convince Lauren to <laughs> go there? And, and, and like, how do we get there? And I said, so I told, cause she, she's going to think we've never done a trip. I got a trip like that <laughs> dating. And so she would think something's up. So I was like, okay. Um, Here's the deal. I said, um, I said, guess what? You know, interesting, Lauren, the, the, the president of Guatemala has contacted <laughs> me. And, and, uh, and I said, you know, they, this was, uh, they want my, uh, my song, God of the City. They want this, uh, they, they want to do something for the nation. And they asked me if I would do this song. And it's like a really special thing. So they're taking, so they're, they, they want to put me up at this really nice hotel. And like, would you come? I wanted to know if you want to come with me. And she's like, um, and, and she's like, well, I've, is it, you know, that really, is it, is somebody, is it, is it, is it, is it a big deal? I was like, well, the, I mean, the president has asked me to come and she goes, she goes, I got this sorority thing, you know, I'm supposed to be doing. And I, and, uh, uh, I get with my sisters. I was like, oh yeah. 
think it's a pretty big deal. I think you should do it. And she goes, well, um, she goes, I had this, it's this thing on Saturday. It was a big deal. I was supposed to do it on Saturday. And I said, it's this Saturday with the president. She goes, well, this Saturday, I just, I can't. She goes, I just, I can't do it. I, I have to do this thing. And I was like, so I was like, okay. So I called her back the next day. I said, guess what? The president moved the thing to Monday. You're not going to believe this, but he moved the event to Monday. And, and um, she's like, really? I was like, yeah. And I, it's all going to work out Monday. She's like, okay, I'll go with you. So we get, we go down there. And so I'm on the plane going to, we're going to Guatemala. And the funny thing is, I'm just remembering all this again, <laughs> is that um, I'm going to, you know, obviously I'm going to propose, but she thinks we're going to meet the president. So she, so that's why I said, you got to have a nice dress. <laughs> you got to do all this thing. And I was trying to remember his name and I was like working on the Spanish. I was like, this is how we, this is how we introduce ourselves and all this kind of thing. So bring something nice. And she said that. Uh, and, and so on the plane, no lie, are these two youth groups and that are on the same plane. And they're like, Chris Tomlin. I was like, hey, yeah. He goes, um, what are you going? What are you? What are you going to bottom off for? Oh no! Off, well, well, I'm doing this. Um, I'm doing this thing with the president. <laughs> so now I'm lying to the youth group, saying, you know, this morning I'm like doing this thing with the president of Guatemala. I'm doing this thing, and they're like, oh, we're coming. They're we're, oh, we're no. coming. Oh <laughs> no! That's so good. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, well, it's a private. It's interesting. It's a private event. I think it's a private event. And so I don't think you can come. They're like, well, we're going to look for it. And I was like, okay, be on the lookout for it. But I think it's private. So we get there and we roll in. And I said, okay, so here's the event. And we're going to meet the president. It's behind these doors. And he, he and I was like, I think the event is through this room. And I had asked these guys and they spoke very little English. Hey, I want this room set up really nice. And I said, and because I'd seen a picture of what they did, it's like all rose petals flowers wow. all over the floor the whole thing is the whole floor is flowers wow in this beautiful beautiful old ancient building and there's one table in the middle and with the candlelight kind of thing and it's all flowers i was like all right. and so they're standing there and i love uh, the guatemala people are so sweet and there's a, and they're just the sweetest people and these little and they're they're tiny people like i i felt tall there which made which is the first time in my life and so and they were like, and I walked up to this room and I was like, Lauren, Lauren's dressed up. And she's like, I'm, I'm nervous about meeting the president. I've never met a president before. I was like, I know. This is crazy. And so, and I was like, this is so great. This, so, and I'm looking at the guys like, oh, do we have this? Are we, is everything good? And um, they're, uh, they're, they're smiling at me like, see, see, see. And so we open the door and the door opens and it's just all the rose petals, and it's all of the, all of the, uh, you know, and it's one table there. And she's like, "Where, where?" And she's like, what, what, "What's going on? What's going on?" And uh, where is the, where's the, where's the president? And uh, she's looking at me like, "Where, where where's the president?" I'm like, where, where, where is everybody? Because it's this big room. And I was like, I was like, "Well, there is no president here. I, I don't know the, I don't know the president of Guatemala. He did not ask me to come here." And. Um, the reason I'm asking, the reason I wanted you to be here, and uh, you know, and then I got down on my knee and wow. asked her to marry me, and I, and I and I had um, learned it in Spanish. Will you oh, marry that's me? Awesome. <laughs> that's awesome! Come on, <laughs> a little touch, and uh, and and she said, and she said yes, and it was like just a really fun surprise for her, that and is very epic. fun for me. So that's kind of what we did. That, that's that's that was the that was the thing. Epic. I love it so much. The president thing got me. I was like, that is like full sin. That is like, we're going all out. I didn't even think about the fact that you would get recognized in the airport and kids would be like, oh, we're going. That's awesome. Because every time we go overseas too, you know, there's so many youth groups are going. They're so excited. They're like, where y'all going? Where y'all going? So that is just so good. Oh my gosh. Well, hey, look, I hope guys are listening to this. I know some of you are. If you're listening, if your girlfriend's sending you the this. It's for a reason. You just need to up your game a little bit. Start thinking. <laughs> learn marry me in Spanish. Fake that you know the president, you know, wherever you can get her. But that, that's so good. Well, Chris, you have been um, such a joy to talk to. I know so many people are going to be inspired by who you are, uh, first and foremost, but also so much of the advice you gave on leading worship, uh, doing life, being just a humble, 
wonderful friend. Um, man, this is so good. So thanks for being on the Weather That's Good podcast. We appreciate you. And everybody go listen to his new album that is out. You don't want to miss it. It's his 30th something, but it is so important. And uh, <laughs> you, you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Chris, thank you so much. Thank you, Sadie. Honor, honored to be here and honored to be with you. And I love what you're doing. Incredible, thank incredible you. what you're doing. So God bless you.